Hey guys, it's Mike from That's Cool Vintage Collectibles, and today on the show I'm going to tell you about one of my absolute favorite pieces in the collection, a full set of Beatle autographs. Stay tuned. So in the fall of 2008, I got a phone call from a fellow that I knew that ran a bunch of auction houses in Ontario. And he had received a call from a former employee of the Toronto Fire Department that said he had a set of Beatle autographs that were signed for the fire department on the Beatles' first tour in 1964. And um, if he, uh, you know, his, his kind of uh, deal at the time was he was elderly, there was nobody um, that he could give these to, and he was looking to sort of move them along to a collector that would have interest in it. And just me being in the right place at the right time, I knew this auction house very well and was able to kind of quietly make an arrangement and a deal and pick these up. So that was um, uh, very, very cool for me and, and a great opportunity, something I never thought I'd own, but you just never know. Uh, and how it ended up working out that he got them was when the Beatles first toured in 1964, uh, they were staying at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto, and just by chance, um, there was a dinner that night for uh, the Toronto Fire Department, and attending the dinner was um, this young lady whose photo is on the back of this autograph, and you'll see at the bottom it says September 1964, and that's when the Beatles were staying there, and that is also uh, right when this photo was developed. And she was uh, kind of the equivalent of Misfire Safety 1964, something like that. And the fellow that I bought this from was her chaperone and also one of the higher ranking fire officials at the time. Um, and she was at the dinner. I'm not sure why she was included at the dinner, but I, have, I think it was something to do with the, um, the parade at the Canadian National Exhibition. And uh, they were either discussing how it was going to take place or... That it had happened already, and it was just kind of a, a celebratory dinner. But either way, they were there for dinner. I'm sure the fire department knew very well that the Beatles were staying upstairs, so it could have been a reason just to keep an eye on things. Um, but they were there, and uh, when they arrived at the hotel, uh, there was a lot of fans outside screaming and yelling up at the balconies, and uh, she decided, you know, I'd like to meet the Beatles, and uh, this fellow that I purchased this from uh, was high enough of rank to be able to make that happen and he called up and Brian Epstein answered the phone and he said uh, we'd like to come up and meet the boys if that's possible and Epstein at first um, declined and said they're not seeing anybody right now um, and he did actually uh, this this gentleman that I'm talking about actually went and said well we, we can remove you from the hotel unless you grant us this uh, and allow her to come up and meet the band and so it was agreed she could come up and meet the band. I'll tell you about that now. Well, as the story goes, the uh, the two people went upstairs and were greeted and brought into the first suite where Paul McCartney was reading fan mail out loud to John Lennon. And uh, they were kind of saying some off-color remarks back and forth about the various letters they were getting. But both uh, agreed and signed the autograph and the you know had a little bit of a small conversation with them and then they were off they were down the hall and Ringo was playing cards with either a roadie or some crew member and uh, they signed uh, I got Ringo to sign as well and if we look at the three autographs uh, of Paul John and Ringo they do kind of nicely place themselves that they were done in that sequence um, and when we get to George, this is sort of an interesting part of the story. This is uh, the one autograph, and I've had this examined before. This is the one that people pause at and say, I don't know about George. Everything looks really good. I don't know about George. But when you hear the story of how this was done, it kind of makes sense. George was um, having dinner, and uh, the fellow I got this from seemed to think it was with his parents and was having a conversation, and they kind of interrupted his dinner and asked him to sign this piece and he did so without really even looking at the piece. He just grabbed a pen and signed it while he was talking and then handed it back. And if you think about that, the autograph is rushed. It's also written over top of Paul's. And that checks out completely to me of how that would have gone down. And, and it was the, the fourth signature. It's the one that sort of doesn't fit where the other ones nicely are displayed and we're, we're taking time with. 
And it's the one that is the most uh, difficult to authenticate because it's sort of rushed and very fastly put together. Um, so this is the one that to me is, is kind of, it's the one that's in question, but it's also the one that to me really authenticates the story because it absolutely checks out with how that was done. So examining the autograph, the uh, the four members are there. The pen seems to have been blotting a little bit on Ringo and John's signature. Um, George, as I mentioned, did sign over top of Paul and Ringo's signature. But all four are there, and it's less likely a counterfeiter would have done that if it was uh, a forgery. Um, I have no reason to doubt the authenticity of this. This spent uh, years and years in the Toronto Fire Hall. And to preserve the piece, uh, you know, they, they did something that isn't really a wise thing for a collector to do, but they laminated this uh, item, which is a horrible thing to have done, but at the same time, it has preserved the strong signatures on it and kept the piece from uh, any uh, tearing or deterioration. So in some ways, it's good for the era that it was signed in, and in another way, it's too bad that they did that. But uh, the signatures are bold and strong, but they are laminated now, so that is unfortunate, and there is some slight discoloration to the lamination, but it's held up pretty good. Um, the piece sat for years and years, uh, decades as a matter of fact, in the Toronto Fire Hall, and then was brought home by the fella that I got it from uh, when he retired, so uh, he had it the rest of the time. So it's really had uh, quite a history, I'm thrilled to own it. Um, and I don't doubt anything being not authentic with this. Uh, there's just no real reason for it to have kind of ended up looking like this. And the story matches really well. Everything seems to check out. Um, but, you know, there are those who will always doubt things like that. And, and, you know, without getting it in person yourself, you're never really sure. Uh, but I have pretty uh, pretty good feeling about this one. And the people that I've shown it to that are in the know... Um, all have said legit. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, the autograph itself sits in my collection. It's one that I'm, I'm thrilled to own. I don't buy many autographs, but this one was just so good. I, I couldn't pass it up and I'm thrilled to have it. I've never been able to get in touch with the woman who's on the front of the photo. I don't know who she is or if she's still alive. I don't know, but I'd love to try to connect with her. Um, but that, that is another, uh, cool element of this that it's on such a personal item like this it's pretty cool so that is the story of my beetle autograph how it ended up in my collection and um, it'll remain here for many many years as one of my favorite all-time pieces so that is how my beetle autograph ended up in my collection and it's an autograph i'll cherish forever and just the history with the toronto fire department and being able to meet the fellow that got it in person and get his story written down before he's now passed away um I, i'm very very uh fortunate to have that opportunity and and really count it as one of my top pieces of my collection i just think it's a, an awesome item and it's one of those things that uh, there's not many kicking around anymore. Of They signed a lot early on in the Beatles, but after 64, 65, uh, certainly not as common to get on one item like that. And uh, I'm really, really pleased to, to have landed that one. So let me know in the comments some of your favorite autographs that you've been able to get over the years and uh, uh, what you think of this one. It's kind of uh, an interesting one for sure. And... Um, you know, everything checks out in my books, so I'm very pleased to have that here. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for finding the channel and tuning in. It's been great. Uh, we're adding more and more people every day. Um, it's still a fairly new channel. We're just entering the fourth month, and uh, I'm thrilled with the response so far, and thank you all for watching. Um, if you like collectible content, it's uh, rock and roll, rock and roll memorabilia, records, uh, guitars, and as well as sports memorabilia and sports cards and uh, vintage uh, anything vintage that I think is kind of cool that I like to have in my uh, collectibles room. So we'll just go over all kinds of things. I'm also doing a, a segment where I'm going to be talking about some of the you know interesting places I visited that um, you know have a lot of history attached to them because I think at the end of the day, collecting history is really what I do. And uh, if you can link it to a personal experience, that's even better. So thanks to uh, everybody for finding the channel, tuning in, and keep on collecting. We'll see you next time.